All right, Paula started racing 23 hours ago, and we're at uh, Chicago International Airport, getting ready to fly to Glasgow. The tour continues. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, uh, we're in we're in we're at University of Stirling in Stirling, Scotland. And uh, if you couldn't tell from that uh, little super mini micro montage, uh, Paula Paula's bag did not make it. So we've got uh, fortunately both of our bikes and my luggage, but Paula's luggage is not here. So. Um, it's, it never got loaded on a plane to Chicago. It's now been 24 hours. Four flights have gone from there to here behind us and it has not made any movement. She needs uh, literally everything. She, she can race. She's got her aero helmet and uh, her, her TT suit and her shoes, but no toe covers, no training equipment, no swimsuit, tri suit, anything. Which she'll need for Finland, obviously. Oh, and and the Wi-Fi here, where we're staying, does not work. So, <laughs> uh, can't at the moment can't use our laptops to try and to try and do anything about it. I am getting ready to go for a run. She's out previewing the course, and she's sick. Um, so it's it's been an awesome last twenty four hours of travel. It's uh, what day is it? It's Tuesday. So uh, we've got about forty eight hours till she races. anything down there I'm pretty sure it is the Sterling Castle uh, I think what I'll do if I have time later and I'm allowed I'll drop in some drone footage of, of this zone What's happened so far? Nothing. It's the worst trip ever. It's the worst trip ever, babe. I know. It's, it's tough. It's hard to talk about it. I know.
into the cocoa? All right, we can get some cocoa for the home store. Things are looking up. All right, since we're still triathletes, we are walking around this mall trying to find Paula a swimsuit and hopefully a cap that she can wear. And the bag has still made no progress. Well over a day later. When we first arrive at the race, we go straight, the first thing we do is go straight to the jig okay. and have them check the bikes, do the first one. Then you get a second check when you make that house. So the first one that will, they'll know they'll put the lasers on, they'll put their tools on. I'm sorry guys, I put on. No, I mean, that's what we I do it now. I it was organized. <laughs> no, no, but believe me, you're not the worst. Uh, we've had some ones that were really bad in the past. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, I'm now running around to bike shops and now a hardware store trying to find some spacer washers for Paula's aero bars because the mechanics think that uh, her bike doesn't comply to UCI regulations because of the height of the armrest pads, which is something we checked on a jig back home numerous times, and it was fine for Canadian TT champs, but uh, these guys don't think it's gonna pass. So just in case, theme of this trip has been anything that could possibly go wrong will go wrong, but hopefully we get it all out of our system before the race. That's what I'm hoping. All right, it's day before the race. We are headed out to the race course. Uh, we're gonna do a preview. Uh, probably, I'm gonna do do everything I can to stay on Paul's wheel again, of course. Probably gonna be another 300 watt threshold ride, but hoping to give a little bit of help uh, getting around, getting around the corners and just like line work. Uh, there's like several sections of the course that are actually fairly technical and. I think if you ride the corners properly, save a ton of time. So. Race morning. Race morning, super stuffed up. You sound better than some days this week. Oh, I do? Okay, well, that's good. Yeah. What's your plan? Uh, I don't, I'm just gonna try to go as hard as I can, even though I'm sick. All right, I don't think I'm gonna be able to follow you to the thing, so I might just have to watch on the internet. Yeah, it's very um, protected. I don't have credentials. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't feel that nervous. I just feel like... I wish I wasn't sick. <laughs> That's all I feel like. Me too. But 
it's okay. I haven't been sick for what? Two years. Two years. Maybe three years. I gotta say, if I was doing a triathlon today, I don't think I would start. I think I can must, I can like fake a 40 minute effort, but if I had a four hour race today, there's no way. Yeah. All right, well, I'm gonna try to go get your bag this morning from the yeah, airport. Yeah, my bag may have arrived. It's supposed to have arrived. Let me check my air tag. Four days later. Okay, she started, but um, likely because she's completely unknown, they just skipped her going on to start gate. Understandable. Triathletes thinking they can do bike racing. Got her on the start on that tracker though. Okay, I've just been watching and forgot to say anything, but at the first time check, she was 30th, second time check, 20th, 4th third time check she's just like holding in there she's only like a minute behind the top 10 but that's obviously a lot and then chloe dagger is just like a minute and a half ahead of second place so now just waiting for her to come across the line still possible depending on how she negotiates that final climb it's still possible high All right, they didn't show, but she uh, she just finished. She got 21st place. Uh, I mean, I'd say that's pretty badass, considering him being a triathlete and blah, blah, all the excuses, but. She's gonna be fired up. All right, we're here at Edinburgh Airport. Um, unfortunately, on the back end of the trip, once again, failed to do like a kind of a race recap on camera, but we managed to get one in for the podcast. It's been just the craziest, craziest week logistically and racing a time trial and doing something that is completely out of our comfort zone, but um, I think I'm gonna be at least the podcast audio to tell this story now. Here we go as well as possible yeah and you were you yeah, made a big deal crazy. about this when you were talking to me about how big of a difference it is compared to even yeah. the highest level of triathlon yes like there's people i got to the venue my bike was already on the trainer ready to go and i get off the bike from my warm-up real wheels on they don't let me ride it over the gravel they're carrying it for me it's like you feel like you're a world Special. champion yeah <laughs> yeah i'm like and I was well, you're a national champion, so close right. enough. Yeah. We didn't know what to expect. Yeah, I didn't know to what extent Eric could be around. Turns out not at all because he wasn't like accredited with the ECI and all that. Oh, so, I see. Um, I didn't necessarily need him because of all the support around, but obviously emotionally, it's not. Compare the feeling of racing a triathlon, three and a half, four hours, four and a half hours, whatever it is, compared to doing that TT, like. Obviously, there's, there might be a point in that that you're going way harder than any point in a triathlon. It's like, it's just you and yourself and your bike and there's no one around you. You're not worried about drafting. You're not worried about other people. I had the 
the head coach in my ear piece, which I really liked. It was super comforting to have someone like giving me splits and I could look down and he'd tell me where the corners were and if I could ride through them or needed to sit up and encourage encouragement along the way, that whole <laughs> that whole thing. It, it really made a bigger difference than I thought. It's, it's so rare to this far into my career be able to do something that's so new and see these things that I could get better at fairly easily. I mean, not easily, but it's not like a fitness ceiling. It's more like a technical and bike setup and experience thing.